Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ultimate Fighter Finale Media Conference Call. The Ultimate Fighter Finale takes place this coming Saturday, November 30th, from the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas. It will air live on Fox Sports 1, with the prelims beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. in the West, followed by the main card at 10 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Pacific. Today on the call, we are joined by three of the four finalists, as well as the two remaining semifinalists ahead of their fight this Wednesday night in the very final episode of The Ultimate Fighter, Team Rousey vs. Team Tate, at 10 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Please welcome, we have Chris Holdsworth from Team Tate, Davy Grant from Team Rousey, Juliana Pena from Team Tate, Raquel Pennington, Team Tate, and lastly, Jessica Rocosi from Team Rousey. Um, I'd like to please let the media know that the, all of the girls will actually be fighting on the card this weekend. Um, so they have been training. They are in training camp, so you can obviously speak to Raquel and Jessica about that. I will mention that Shayna Baszler and Sarah Morris, unfortunately, are injured and will not be on the card, um, but the rest of the, the women will. Operator, we are now ready to open the call for questions. Thank you. And if you would like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone today, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, please press star 1 to ask a question. From John Morgan with USA Today. Thank you. If I could start with uh, Chris, please. Chris, um, obviously you've got a lot of great mentors there at your camp, but uh, Kate Dillashaw had a lot of great success, you know, in the UFC since, but he fell short in the finals. I'm curious what, uh, you know, kind of what advice that he's given you in preparation of what to do or what not to do to get yourself fully prepared for the finale. Um, you know, the, the fight game is never 100%, you know, uh, you, you can't always win, but you know, that's, that's on my mind 100%. That's what I plan on doing. And, Pretty much, you know, there's not so much, uh, too much advice he could give me. Uh, you know, he fell short, and uh, I don't plan on falling short. So that's my answer. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. If I could ask Davey, please. Davey, obviously, it was kind of an emotional moment for you uh, when you made your way to the finals. I think a lot of people would just count their blessings and not care that they got there by way of a free pass as long as they were there. But it, it seems like you didn't see it that way. So. I'm just kind of curious if you could explain your emotions and, and kind of what you were feeling in that moment, knowing that you got to the finals, but but not the way you wanted to be there. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've, I dreamt about that moment of getting to the Ultimate Fighter finale so many times, that, uh, and, and never once did I ever get there by, by forfeit, you know. I mean, I'm a fighter, I wanted to fight, I wanted to earn my place there, and uh, it was just, it, it was really disappointing, and uh and I just sort of welled up with it. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I wanted to show the world what I can do. I, I felt as if I got cheated out of out of my final fight. And uh, I just didn't want to be the guy who got to, uh, remembered as the guy who got to the finale by forfeit. Sure. Thank, thank you, David. For Juliana, if I could real quickly, no uh, obviously we don't, we don't know your opponent at this point yet, but, um, you know, when this fight between Jessica and Raquel was playing out, uh, did you have a hope of who you who you wanted to win? Did you feel like one fighter was a better matchup for you than the other? Um, no, you know, I was looking at it like uh, I wanted to to be able to take down uh, Ronda Rousey's team because that was the whole point in the whole team's segment. So, you know, I was looking forward to fighting somebody from from Ronda's team. If I would have had to fight somebody from Tate's team, then then that's fine too. You know, I'm prepared to fight anybody. Thank you. And just finally, if I could, for Jessica and Raquel, please, I was can't talk about your fight at this point in time, but I, I just want to ask you about your overall feeling of the show as a whole. There's been a lot of talk about how the coaches came off, how the women came off. You know, the women had better ratings than the men's fights. You know, some positives and negatives both ways, but I'm just curious, you know, how you felt like the entire season was in terms of the women's division, if it was a positive thing and an accurate portrayal to introduce things to the public or, you know, if you had any issues with it. So if I could start with Jessica, please, and, and then Raquel will answer. That'd be great. Yeah, I felt like the women really, they they showed why they belong there and all the girls had great fights. And, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's nice to see that the girls had a lot of um, exposure on TV and the ratings were high. So that's, you know, we couldn't ask for a better season for the women. Thank you, Raquel. 
I'd have to agree with Jessica. You know, I think that it gave the women great exposure and a good opportunity to show what they really want and not lose their this position. Um, it gave me a great experience just to be able to hang out with the other fighters and see how, like, the other women are or even the guys going into the fights and stuff, just how they prepare or whatnot and how everybody's mentality kind of is. Um, I think it was pretty cool because we had pioneers of the sport on there as well as up-and-coming fighters. So it just it gave great exposure to um, all the different years of the women fighting. Fantastic. Thank you all, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Garrett Stavies with Stavie Telegraph. Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you're well. Thank you very much for this today. Uh, London calling, yes. Um, could, I, could I start by... Um, by asking Chris Holdsworth, please. Um, Chris, can you give an assessment of Davy Grant and, and what you've been preparing for um, to face him in, in this final? In this... Man, I have a lot of respect for Davy. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a really great competitor, um, a, a really good fighter, and overall, a really uh, good dude. Um, you know, we, we got along really well on the show, and uh, you know, I, I I, I respect him as a person. I respect him as a fighter, but this is business, and we, we both want the same thing. And uh, we're going to go in, the, in there on Saturday night and show the world who deserves it. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, we, we, we've heard before from people like Leota Machida and Mark Munoz how they had to put uh, friendship to one side for business as they did in Manchester recently. The same from Chael Sonnen and Rashad Evans when they battled in where, uh, I think it was Las Vegas. I, think I was there, I ought to remember, um, recently, a couple of weeks ago. Um, have you taken any psychological or sports psychology support in being able to try and do this to make sure you can put friendship to one side? Are you do, have you done anything extra in order to educate and train your mind? Um, you know, I, I try to visualize a lot and, and, and do stuff like that. No, I didn't go see a shrink or anything like that. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything crazy like that. So, um, you know, to me, this is just another fight. Everyone's like, oh, this is, you know, you get the biggest fight of your life coming up. But, you know, yeah, I do see it that way. But, you know, I'm also just looking at it as another fight because I don't need any extra added pressure. So I'm going in there, uh, you know, with a, a clear mind and uh, a, a big heart. So I'm, I'm just going in there ready to fight. It's a 50-50 fight. It's a what? It's a 50-50 fight. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Right. But... You what think that, it's what does that mean? 50-50? Oh, on, on like betting? I don't know. What's the question? Do you think it's an even fight? Oh, 50 oh, for you and Dave? Um, I don't know, man. He, he he brings a lot of things to the table, and uh, you know, of course, you're always gonna you know have more confidence in yourself, and probably give it a fifty-fifty fight. That's you know giving him fifty percent of a chance. So, um, yeah, I try to stack the cards in my favor as much as possible. So. Um, it's definitely a, a tough fight and probably one of the toughest fights in my career. So uh, I'm just looking at it that way and, you know, I'm ready. So, uh, A question for, for Davey. Davey, um, yes. Michael Bisping, Ross Pearson, James Wilkes and Norman Park have all been British fighters who've won the Ultimate Fighter. Have you taken any advice from any of those men? Um, no, to be honest, I, I, haven't talk, I haven't talked to any of them, no. Um, I, I'm like, I mean, Bisping was messaging us, uh, wishing us good luck and stuff like that. But, um, like, like Chris said, I mean, there's, there's not a lot of people can say, you know, and I, I've got to go in there and I've got to do it, you know. Um, so, so no, I'm not, to be honest, I haven't really, I haven't really talked to anyone. I've got good luck messages from them, but that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know who was doing the dishes then, but um, <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask um, the ladies, and uh, maybe starting off with Juliana, um, kind of similar to, to, to a question from John Morgan earlier, really, which is, um, do you feel that the series um, 
projected women's mixed martial arts in the right way, given the animosity, the kind of real, I don't say the word bitchy, but very, very nasty rivalry between the two coaches of the teams. How did you feel about it, Juliana? Did it portray women's mixed martial arts in the right way? Uh, I think so. I think that uh, it was it was portrayed uh, the way that it is in real life. The only difference is now that we're living with each other. Um, you know, you don't get the chance to see what your opponent says uh, about you. You know, you only get to fight them. And, and in this case, we got to see what they were saying behind our backs, and then we got to fight them. And so I think that it was uh, portrayed accurately. Um, and I think, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> And could I ask um, the other two ladies, obviously, are involved in their fight. It's still kind of a weird scenario. The other two ladies, uh, we, we don't know the outcome of your fight because it hasn't been aired yet. But can I ask you both how you feel about the additional division being added uh, to the UFC next year of a strawweight division for the women? Do you feel that this is going to be the beginning of an avalanche? I, I feel that it definitely is going to be the beginning of, of something great to come and you know there's just going to be more weight classes which means more girls and uh, more exposure it's great for the women yeah i totally agree uh, i think it's given the exposure to the women that we finally deserve i mean there's women from all different weight divisions that have sat there and put in their work day in and day out just like all the men and it's been the men for years that have had that opportunity and now i think with the women that set foot in ultimate fighter uh i think we set a good pace for all the other women that are coming out and getting this opportunity as well as inspiring um, young younger women and children to get in there and do more work. Yeah, just playing devil's advocate with a few questions there. But I want to add, from my, from my side, I think it's been an amazing series and I think you've all really portrayed mixed martial arts in a fantastic way, frankly. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Mark Ramondi with PopSports.com. How's it going, guys? Good, you? Hey. Good, how are you? Juliana, I wanted to ask you, um, obviously, uh, you're a training partner of Nisha and, and you're a friend of Nisha. Rhonda has taken a lot of heat, you know, throughout this series. You were there in person. How do you think she, she came off? And by the end of, like, you know, the show, how did you feel about, about Rhonda as a person and as a coach? Um... You know, I think she came off as the way that she is, which I respect. Rhonda plays Rhonda uh, 110% of the time, and, and that's uh, that's what I respect about her. Um, as far as me personally, she had, you know, bought into some spat with me, and uh, she had some choice words to say to me, to my face, and, um, you know, she didn't really rub me the right way. I didn't like the way that they messed with uh, my food in the house and just I felt like they were just, play, you know, um, pinpointing me because I was guilty by association. So I didn't necessarily like that, but uh, I respect her as a, a fighter and I think that she's a great, great athlete. And, um, you know, I think that she came across as exactly how she is. Would you be looking forward to possibly getting a fight with her down the road, you think? Um, yeah, but, you know, that's not my focus. My focus is, is my fight that I have in front of me right now, and that's all I'm thinking about. Hey, Davey, how's it going, man? Hey, man, you okay? I know um, you and uh, you and Rhonda got pretty close during the show, and uh, you guys have been uh, hanging out since, since then. Um, after watching yeah. the show, do you think she came off accurately, or do you think it was it was a little bit harsh on her, the way that, you know, the show was edited and everything? I think I think she's been seen as, as a little bit more miserable than what she really is on the show, you know. Um, she, she's a but she's so competitive and takes everything so seriously. But that's come 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 across a lot. But um, but, but I think she's a, she's a, a lot more bubbly and um and a, a really really nice girl, you know. Um, so I, I don't I don't think the show shows the trailer exactly, like exactly how she is. I think she's a lot more happy. She's a lot more easy going. But when it comes down to competition, she's just got that fire about her. And uh, and I think that's come across more than the, than the, than the other side of it, which is like the the happy and bubbly and, and nice girl that I've come to really like. Excellent. And uh, Chris, I know that um, obviously you were on Team Tate, 
But uh, I remember you had some comments you know, that are positive about Rhonda. How do you think she came across during the show, and what was your experience with her? Uh, I've been a pretty big fanboy of Rhonda ever since she, uh, <laughs> you know, came in came into the UFC. Actually, she fought in the same amateur uh, league as me, maybe even the same card. So uh, I, I remember Rhonda, uh, you know, back when she was first starting, and I was I'm, I've always been a big fan. And, uh, tell you the truth, I wanted to be on her team. You know, I think all the guys did. But once I got talking to Misha and uh, I found out some of her coaching staff and stuff like that, I was comfortable with and I've worked with before. Uh, I was uh, I was happy to be on anyone's team and just be given the opportunity to uh, you know make history and and you know get on this the show with uh, the women and stuff. But you know, like uh, like Davey was saying, she uh, she's she's very competitive and she's going to show that she likes to play them psychological games and under people's skin and uh you know always win but i got the chance to see her bubbly side as well she uh you know got to come to the the house quite often and we got to talking and she's a really cool uh she's a really cool down to earth person and you know some people might have seen her bad side or you know switched to misha's side but um you know I, I like her as a person and an athlete and i have a lot of respect for her Yes, I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. And as another reminder to ask a question, that is star one on your telephone keypad. We'll take our next question from Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Hello, thank you for the time. My first question is for Juliana Pena. Uh, it seemed that in the house you faced a lot of adversity. What was the experience like for you having to deal with that adversity and still keep your head up going through all the fights that you had? Um, you know, looking back on it now, uh, I realized that, that the way that they, the way that it played out in the house is exactly the way that it needed to go down in order for me to, to be successful and in order for me to make it to the finale. So I'm glad that that's the way it went down. You know, you don't really get an opportunity to, uh, ever have six weeks to just yourself, to just focus on just yourself and to, to improve yourself as a fighter. And uh, so I was really grateful for the opportunity to be able to do that and, and focus on myself is exactly what I did. And, um, you know, having to deal with, with everybody, you know, hating on me or, or being rude or whatever was, was minuscule um, in comparison to, you know, what I'm going to have to deal with, you know, for the rest of my life and, and career as a fighter. Um, people are going to pointing the fingers and looking at you and having to say something about you, you know, and that's just stuff that you need to uh, let roll off your back and uh, just keep moving forward. And, and as a fighter, focus on yourself and um, just keep improving as a fighter. So it, did, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Thank you. And for Chris Holdsworth, it seems in the show that you wanted to work on your striking, that you wanted to flaunt that as something that you've been working on and developing. How much have you really been working on that for the finale fight and, you know, wanting to stand in trade more so than using your wrestling? Uh, I haven't been working on my striking at all. I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's been... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of been cool to have uh, Dwayne Ludwig at you know in Sacramento, you know, uh, leading our team now. He's a he's a great pioneer in the kickboxing world, and uh, he has a lot of experience. He has got the fastest knockout in UFC history, and he, he's brought a lot to our team. And I've gotten the chance to get a lot of time in with him, getting ready for this uh, finale, and. I've trained with a, a lot of other good coaches, you know, in my past as well. I think just in, uh, in a lot of my previous fights, um, you know, I just didn't really get to showcase any of my stand-up skills because uh, I saw opportunities and, uh, you know, when I see an opportunity to finish, I'm going to go after it. I'm one of those type of fighters. Every time I see a finish, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do that. I'm, I'm not going to try to just, you know, go for one thing or have something set in mind. I'm, I'm just always looking for uh, the finish and to get the fight, you know, over with as fast as possible. Um, so that's just kind of my uh, mentality, and it's, uh, it's been, uh, been going good. And being the next big thing coming out of Team Alpha Male, 
what kind of pressure is is there on you to emerge as that next top prospect out of th that camp? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm you know, the next big thing. I'm one of the up and comers coming out of there, and uh, I've put my time in, and uh, I, I've been in this game for you know, quite some time now, and. Uh, we got a lot of guys people don't know about that are, you know, uh, doing big things in the gym and, and coming up on the, the smaller surface and stuff. But I just think, uh, you know, it's, it's my time. And um, I don't think there's any added pressure. Uh, me being around uh, all these uh, top-level athletes and like-minded individuals with a lot of the same goals kind of just, you know, helps me put things into perspective and, and seeing how people get ready for – uh, you know, huge UFC fights, title fights. Like, I had the chance to get ready with, you know, Joseph Benavides. He's fighting for the, you know, the flyweight strap. Uh, plus, he's fighting on uh, the same card as us, but he's actually got pushed back two weeks. And, uh, you know, we got four guys fighting on the December 14th card in Sacramento. So, um, all of us have been peaking together and, and training together, and it's been going great. So, um, that's what it is. Great, thank you. And for Davy Grant, uh, as mentioned before, we yeah. noticed that you've uh, developed a strong bond with your coach, Ronda Rousey, so much that you're training now down in Southern California, working with her ahead of this fight. Uh, what went into your decision to uh, go down to Southern California to train with her? So, sorry, could you say that again? I couldn't hear you properly. Oh, what went into your decision to go down to Southern California to train with Ronda Rousey before this fight? Oh, right. Well, yeah, um, I, obviously I've got on this all well with Ronda and the show and, the, and the coaches. I mean, I've got I've got a lot of respect for them. I thought they were, I thought they were brilliant coaches, and uh, I'm, get, I'm getting on with them so well. And obviously, I needed to come over. I wanted to get used to the time difference, used to the weather, the humidity, and things like that. And uh, and it just seemed like that. I was I was just so comfortable with them. It just seemed like the right thing to do. So so there was no doubt in my mind that that, that it would benefit me to come and train uh, and, and uh, stay with Ronda and, and again. Great, thank you. And one question for Raquel Pennington. Uh, how encouraging was it for you on the show to have Dana White come up to you personally and tell you how much he enjoyed your fight and also to let your hands fly? Um, you know, I think it's probably every fighter's dream to have the big man come up to you and just talk to you. And I know that he's talked to a few other fighters and whatnot, which is a good thing for all of us. I mean, I think it could only build your confidence up as a fighter and stuff. Uh, it was totally unexpected for me. I mean, when I first entered the show, uh, Misha and Brian, they kind of came up to me when they were calling us into the locker room to get to know us, and they are like, hey, you're a little bit to yourself. You're pretty quiet and stuff. Uh, if you need anything, just let us know. And I was just like, okay. And so I kind of just remained quiet a lot of the time. Um, and then when Dana just kind of came up to me, I mean, I've had people from back home and my teammates and everything telling me those same things, and I was just like, uh, I think Ultimate Fighter, for one, was a good thing for me mentally. And um, I was just kind of like, you know, when people tell me those things back here, I was like, you're supposed to tell me that. You're my teammate or this, that, or another. And it was kind of a, it was, like I said, it was a good confidence booster for me when he talked to me. I mean, there was a few occasions where he just came up and kind of talked to me and told me so many different things. And it was just like, like, okay, well, I know you don't lie about different things. So uh, I think uh, it just really opened my eyes to what, more I am as an athlete, I guess you can say. Great. And last question for Jessica Verkowski. Uh, being the last woman standing of Team Rousey, how much pressure was there for you on the show to come out ahead and win for the team? For me, it, it didn't really feel like a lot of pressure because, you know, I'm the last pick and I'm, everybody's kind of looking down on me. You know, they don't think I'm very, you know, much of a fighter, so... For me, it really didn't feel like a lot of pressure. I just had to go out and you have to prove yourself. So, you know, that's, that's how it goes by every fight. Great. Thank you for the time. No problem. Thank you. And at this time, we do have one call remaining in the queue. Just another reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, that is star one on your telephone keypad. We'll take our next question from Damon Martin with FoxSports.com. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, my first question is for uh, Davey Grant. Uh, Davey, it was mentioned earlier, of course, that you, you kind of had to go through a weird situation getting to the finale when, uh, you know, when Gutierrez couldn't make weight. My question is this. We saw a lot of weight-cutting woes in the season this season, you know, a lot different than past seasons. 
I want to come from your personal perspective. How tough was it making weight multiple times? Because from what I can tell, you're a pretty big guy for bantamweight. I mean, how tough was it on you making weight, you know, three times uh, over that six-week period? Yeah, to, well, to be honest, it got easier every time. I, I felt I, I, I felt loads more comfortable with it with each weight cut, um, and and I, I knew what I was there for. Do you know what I mean? I'm a dedicated man. I've got a, I've got a family behind me. There was, do you know what I mean? There could be there could have been pizzas on the table every night, and I still wouldn't have ate them. Do you know what I mean? It, it, so, um, yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't really struggle making the weight at all. I mean, the weight was never nice, but uh, it got easier and easier as, as the time went on, I felt. Did you did you notice that in the house, I mean, obviously, without giving away, you know, without kind of ratting on your roommates, but, I mean, do you feel like, you know, it was a tough weight cut on them, both, you know, obviously uh, Cody and uh, Anthony, or or do you think that, you know, it, it was just their habits, that, you know, the, the, the you know having that food list in the house where you can eat anything you want? Do you think that backfired more than... Uh, maybe just a tough weight cut. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, um, me, me and Mike were, I think we were, we were, we were walking about at the same weight as Cody and Anthony, you know what I mean? But they were like, they, 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 I think I think they've got themselves to blame, you know, they, they should have been a bit more strict about it, they never even got caught up in the moment, you know what I mean? It's hard, especially when you've got a lot of people around you, and it's like, uh, it was like sometimes it could, it could feel like a little holiday camp for them, and, um, and, and they, should have, they should have been a hell of a lot more strict, and, um, yeah, that's it. And last question for you, Davey, and then I'll move on to, to Chris as well. But I'll ask you kind of the same question is, you know, this season of the show, the women have gotten a lot of attention. The Lions share the attention with the fights, obviously the ratings, things like this. I mean, as a as a fighter, do you appreciate that side of the sport? Obviously, the, the, you know, liking the women fighting or, or, you know, have you felt like a little underrated because the women have got so much attention this season? No, not at all. I think I think I think it was a it was a pleasure to be a part of the season with the women. I mean, I, I got on with all the girls in the house, and and I want them all to do really well for themselves. And, uh, and it's good that they're finally getting the exposure that they deserve. You know, they go out, and they, they they put themselves through the same stuff that we do. You know, the 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 day in day out training and diet, and and, and they, they deserve the exposure. And uh, and it was nice. It was nice in the house as well. You know, it was, it was nice to have that sort of break up of testosterone. You know. So, um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed having the women on the show, to be honest. And, and um, yeah, that's it. And kind of the same question for Chris right there. I mean, obviously, you went out and had, you know, really strong performance on the show. You ended up having to fight the most because of all the weight cutting. So, uh, do you feel like you got the attention you deserve? And also kind of throw that weight cutting question back at you. Is that, you know, how tough was it for you to watch that, you know, not that it's Davey's fault, but, you know, see guys like Cody and guys like Anthony kind of throw away their opportunity by not making weight. You know, you had to kind of sit by and watch that while you were able to go out and be the most impressive guy because you were able to fight. Um, yeah, it's definitely uh, not an easy task to, to keep your, your weight that low. Uh, you know, I'm a pretty uh, big 135er myself, but... Uh, I think, you know, MMA has a lot to do with the uh, discipline, sacrifice, and, uh, you know, making the right choices. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty disciplined, and I, I make a lot of sacrifices, and I know what needs to be done to to get my weight down and uh, and, and and keep it down. So uh, I was eating really well, and, you know, uh, there was a lot of temptations in the house, and some people might uh, uh, fell for the temptations more than others, like you saw. Uh, I think that's exactly what happened. Uh, people were just were maybe just a little young and immature and didn't know how to react to the situation. And um, I kept my uh, my my mind on you know the the goal at hand, and uh, it, it all worked out. And as far as uh, you know, me fighting the most and stuff like that, um, you know, the Champions Road is always the hardest. But on that uh, on another note. Uh, I don't take anything away from Davey. Like it wasn't his fault at all. He he made weight. He was ready to fight. Um, it, 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 it was sucked that he, it sucked that he didn't get to showcase his skills and let people know that he deserved to be in the finale. But uh, I totally think he does. I think he was uh you know the other uh, besides myself the you know the best fighter in the house. So uh, it's gonna be a, a pleasure fighting him and it's gonna be a great fight. Yeah, thanks for the man. Yeah, yeah, sure. And a couple of quick questions for Juliana. Juliana, you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, Ronda Rousey, you know, was exactly who she was, quote unquote, uh, being portrayed on the show. How about yourself? You know, when you look back at the way you were portrayed on the show, kind of villainized in a lot of ways and kind of made out to be the bad guy, so to speak. Do you feel like you were portrayed accurately through all the season of the show? Uh, yeah, for the most part, I feel like I was. Um, 
The only thing that I would have liked to, uh, for them to have shown more of is, is how I was um, so annoying and, and, and just, you know, bothering people. They showed me blow-drying my hair, and they made it look like I was blow-drying my hair while Kel was sleeping, but I never did that. <laughs> so the editing there was kind of messed up, you know. Um, I don't think I would ever blow-dry my hair while someone was taking a nap. I just think that that's rude. Um <laughs> And so, and like the whole like slamming the door and all that stuff was very exaggerated. I felt like they, they focused a little bit too much on what I was doing and not enough on what they were doing. And, uh, you know, there's things that they were doing that I wouldn't say anything about. And then uh, everything I did was just they were watching me like a hawk. So, um, you know, I, I feel like I, for the most part, I was portrayed accurately. And last question for you, Juliana. You know, coming into the house, you were the underdog going in against Shayna Baszler. And I think everyone understood that, given Shayna's experience level. And the, the fight with Sarah, maybe even as well, because obviously you had fought her before. But this time, you know, nothing against Jeff or Raquel, but it seems like you will probably come in as the favorite because of your performances on the show and, and what people have seen out of you. Do you like that role reversal? I mean, do you mind being the favorite versus kind of being a, a little bit of an underdog on the show? Um, no, I don't, I don't look at it like that. You know, I look at it as, uh, this person has just as good as chances as I do. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I take the fight very seriously. And so I don't think of underdog or favorite or anything like that. I think of forget about all that stuff. I have to fight. And at the end of the day, I have to get locked in the cage and do what I uh, have to do. So, um, the whole underdog and favorite thing doesn't come into my mind. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much. There appears to be no further questions. At this time, Ms. Hodge, I'd like to turn the conference back to you for any additional or closing remarks. Great. Thanks, Janine. Just a reminder to everyone that Saturday will cap the 18th season of the series, and we will see champions crowned both the men's bantamweight division and for the first time ever have a women's uh, winner of the Ultimate Fighter. We'd like to thank everyone for attending. The fight again is this Saturday live on Fox Sports 1. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. See you later, guys. Miss you, Davey. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah, I'll see you in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> Bye. Baby. Bye. 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 B